This is the computer I use to edit my videos on. Well, this and my Vio S laptop from 2012. Jeez, time flies. FX6100 6 core. Brother built it back in college days for, you know, Illustrator and Excel. Spent little to nothing on it, so he's not complaining. And everybody who doesn't know anything about computers thinks, well, This video is brought to you by me, because I have no sponsors, but if you want to get something done, do it yourself. And hey, if I can do it, you can do it too. Anyways, back to the video. AM3 board, two 4 gigabyte sticks of RAM installed wrong, no SSDs, and a 750 gigabyte hard drive. He was never a hardcore gamer, only contemplating getting a card until my dad got fed up with his MacBook Pro 2009 and bought an MSI GTX 1050 Ti solely to enjoy X-Plane 11 or Flight Simulator X on Windows. Around the prime years of my Vio laptop, which for me was like 2017, Ryzen was making a ruckus. I never had great expectations for it being an Intel guy, then my laptop started to go out on me. This happened a lot actually. They got slower and slower for reasons I couldn't even keep up with. So I gave myself a $500 budget to get a desktop. No capping this time. Raw power. Or whatever I could get for $500. So I did my research. Turns out single core processing is better for gaming and that's where Intel's been making their mark. Multi core processing is better for editing and content creation work and that's where AMD has been making their mark with the Ryzen series chips. I'm not the biggest gamer unless the opportunity really presents itself such as at a house party or in Walmart. I never liked the idea of paying monthly for games or cloud gaming, but dang, why is everything about gaming? I just want a fast, powerful machine that can handle anything I throw at it. It doesn't have to be portable. 2014, I thought technology had it, and you guys really knew what you were talking about, and I could actually do that, but I was wrong. No compromises. I'm doing this. I'm getting a desktop, but dang, why have I always grown up thinking that to get power, even for editing or anything, I would need a gaming computer? That's kind of mixing matters, isn't it? Gaming, desktop, workstation? Intel chips boast higher bench scores for gaming, but they cost more. Ryzen chips have slightly lower gaming bench scores, but better workstation bench scores for less money. Options for a $500 Intel build for someone that's not even a real gamer slim to none. How do I get a fast computer without a graphics card or having to build the whole thing myself? Enter the bare bones. This way I save money by not buying a PC with a graphics card already installed in it driving up the price tag. And I can option it out with other high quality components that would otherwise be lackluster if the graphics card were included in a $500 build. I won't have to build the entire thing myself just plug in a few other parts. Though buying and building one myself still seems like the cheapest way to go. I swiped up the cutest little Ryzen 7 2700X with the Wraith Prism Cooler, an AM4 A320M Revision 4 motherboard, a 450 watt PSU, and a DIY solo PC case. All for just $350 off eBay. I wanted to know what would make it faster and better if I could. I thought DDR4 memory was like a big upgrade from my old setup, but the speed of memory has rather little impact to overall performance compared to the amount of memory. It wouldn't make much difference if I had 2100 memory or 3600 memory, because 3600 memory is really expensive. Unsurprisingly, with a 2700X and 1050 Ti, it's virtually no match for my home i7 7700K and GTX 1080 build that I've envied since he got it. But he was running a SATA SSD, which I've known for some time now are much slower than M.2 drives. I realized that the highest benchmarking M.2 drives are not the most expensive and they make a much larger impact on overall system performance compared to memory. So instead of going with the 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue M.2 at 500 megabytes read and write speed for $54 and two 4 gigabyte sticks of 2666 memory for $30. I opted for the HP EX 921 terabyte at 2000 megabytes per second read speed for $124 and 
two four gigabyte sticks of 2400 megahertz memory for $25, bringing my total spending to $450 respectively. Just look at these virtual benchmarks of my new build compared to my older computers and my homie 7700K build. Sure his is better for gaming, but I'm not a crazy game head and not only can I actually game on my machine, but my workstation outperforms his for a fraction of the price. So I still get to play all my favorite last gen AAA titles and I can edit and make content for you guys a lot faster than anyone else I know. Anyways, that's it for the video guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. Comment and subscribe. Ciao. Hmm, let's say I wanna upgrade later on down the line with a sweet little 2080 super. Look at that bench. Who's got the killer gamer all around PC now?